Critics are raising questions about whether there are health and safety issues with the fireproofing insulation used in the new One World Trade Center, the tallest building in North America. The spray-on foam fireproofing contains polystyrene, a material that has been labeled a known carcinogen in humans by the Department of Health and Human Services. And a major manufacturer of fireproofing insulation says it doesn't use polystyrene in its insulation because it's concerned the material is potentially flammable. W.R. Grace is the maker of the fireproofing insulation used on the New World Trade Center, which goes by the brand name Monocoat. Grace confirms that Monocoat contains a, quote, low concentration, end quote, of polystyrene. The company says the material is safe and its function is to, quote, make buildings better able to withstand fire so occupants can escape and firefighters can do their job in greater relative safety, end quote. Polystyrene is made from styrene. The government says exposure to styrene and its derivative polystyrene can increase the risk of cancer. HHS says the greatest risk for exposure to styrene comes from cigarette smoking. For non-smokers, HHS says the greatest risk is from inhaling indoor air and food. It says styrene can be, quote, emitted to the air from building materials containing it. The findings raise concern about whether exposure to the material is bad for construction workers applying the material and for tenants in the building. Grace defends its use of polystyrene. Quote, expanded polystyrene is commonly used in packaging materials, insulation, and packaging, while solid polystyrene is commonly found in food packaging, plastic cutlery, CD cases, and other products where a rigid economical plastic is needed, end quote, said Christine Welby, a spokesperson for Grace. Quote, in fact, the FDA has approved the use of polystyrene food packaging for more than 50 years, end quote, Welby added. But in June 2011, the National Toxicology Program of HHS labeled styrene and its derivative polystyrene as, quote, known or reasonably anticipated to cause cancer in humans, end quote, in part based on studies showing genetic damage to workers exposed to the material. NTP's 12th report on carcinogens noted the widespread use of polystyrene, quote, in the manufacture of plastic packaging, thermal insulation and building construction, and refrigeration equipment, and disposable cups and containers, end quote. Grace's own product disclosure form, or material data sheet, MDS, for Monocoat, warns of health risks from using the product. It reads, quote, prolonged exposure may cause risk of lung disease, that is silicosis or lung cancer. Symptoms include coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and reduced pulmonary function, end quote. This isn't the first time concerns have been raised about Grace's fireproofing. Earlier this year, Grace emerged from a 12-year bankruptcy period after it was sued for billions of dollars because it lied about asbestos use in its products. It continued to use trace amounts of asbestos in its products even after others in the industry abandoned asbestos because of health concerns. Publicly, Grace said the asbestos-tainted fireproofing was safe. After the asbestos fiasco, in which Grace faced 129,000 lawsuits, the company reformulated Monaco to include polystyrene. U.S. News & World Report noted in an article in 2001 that, quote, word about use of asbestos in Grace's products began getting out in the industry before it became widely known, end quote, to the public. That industry concern seems to be occurring with Grace's use of polystyrene. Isolatech International, one of Grace's major competitors, says it doesn't use the material in its own products because of health and safety concerns. Paulette A. Strobnicki, the director of legal services for Isolatech, said, quote, It is not the policy of Isolatech International to comment on the safety or efficacy of our competitors' products or their use. Isolatech International is aware that the medical community and the federal government have serious concerns regarding the safety of styrene and products and its use in the work environment. As a manufacturer of life safety products, we've made a conscious decision not to explore or incorporate any styrene or styrene derivatives in our products because of their potential flammability and related health issues, end quote. In 2001, just after Grace filed bankruptcy, the New York Times noted, quote, the story of Grace's fireproofing raises questions about how a corporation should act when there's a deep concern but no scientific certainty about a product's safety, end quote. Similar questions about companies and industries' responsibility appear to be raised by the use of polystyrene. While media attention is focused on styrene use in styrofoam, there's been little scrutiny of its safety and fireproofing. Since the National Toxicology Program labeled styrene a known carcinogen in people, an industry trade group has been trying, so far unsuccessfully, to get styrene taken off the cancer-causing list. The industry trade organization, the Styrene Information and Research Center, lost a federal lawsuit in 2013 trying to get styrene delisted. 
The NTP is currently reviewing its carcinogen report, and a new one is expected next year. The EPA is also expected to weigh in by September 2015. But there's uncertainty about the risk polystyrene poses. Robert Solomon of the National Fire Protection Association, an industry trade organization whose members include many insurance firms, said, quote, I'm not aware of any health studies or tests that would have been done to investigate the effects, if any, of a shredded polystyrene component used in any of the fireproofing SFRM products. Many components or products have health effects that are harmful in high concentrations or pure forms, but those effects are likely to be lessened in circumstances where the product is used as part of a composite. The same would also be true of the combustibility of such materials." End quote. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the owner of the World Trade Center, has publicly touted various safety aspects of the new tower it says are better than the old buildings and, quote, exceed New York City building code, end quote. But the Port Authority refused to provide any specifics about the fireproofing and had no comment on safety concerns about the use of polystyrene in the fireproofing insulation. The Port Authority also refused to provide records about the fireproofing under a Freedom of Information Act request citing public safety. Ironically, the Port Authority seems to have chosen Monocote in part to address safety concerns raised by the National Institutes of Standards and Technology about the adhesiveness of the fireproofing used in the old World Trade Center. In its official report on the World Trade Center collapse, NIST found the airplane scraped the fireproofing off the columns in the Twin Towers, causing the steel to overheat and buckle, leading to a progressive collapse. Elizabeth Kubaini, the Director of Public Affairs for Skidmore Owens & Merrill, the architect for the new One World Trade Center, said the fireproofing on the new building is, quote, fundamentally different than that on the original towers. The adhesion cohesion values for our fireproofing are significantly higher on the order of seven times than the original towers, end quote. But by concentrating on the adhesiveness of the fireproofing, the Port Authority may have been focusing on the wrong issue. A comment published in the Journal of Fire Sciences earlier this year challenges the NIST findings about the adhesion of the fireproofing. Two leading scientists, a former NIST advisor and a former NIST supervisor, say it's extremely unlikely the airplane scraped the fireproofing off the towers. The more likely cause of the collapse of the Twin Towers, they say, was that the fireproofing on the steel floor trusses wasn't thick enough. 